Where do you begin? We'll begin at Goodison. Everton's march away from the relegation trouble uh, post a 10 points deduction continues. They swept past Chelsea. There's another story, Chelsea, but they swept past them by two goals to nil. And here's a stat for you. Without the points deduction, Everton would be four points away from Manchester United and the uh, the Europa League spots. That's the difference the run they're on has made since the 10 point deduction. Can you believe it? Deitch is happy as you might imagine. Decisions were made that are way out of uh, my situation. We've got to react to what that situation put us in. We have reacted, that's quite obvious, as a, as a club, as well as as a group of players and a staff. Now it's about continuing that and then wait and see. You know, what, what happens in the, the next uh, moment after the appeal, we'll have to wait and see. I think everyone was absolutely staggered when they, they saw the news, including myself. Um, the whole of football, not just... Um, you know, the tough is, I think everyone was surprised. So let's see what comes out the back of that. Yes, maybe a false position, but it's a reality at this moment. So I'm, I'm a big um, as you can imagine. Realities are what I deal with. <laughs> you know, Stuart, if Sean Dyche, and I know he's a pal of yours, if he keeps them up, is he automatically a top contender for manager of the season? Um, depends how far they get up the league, I would say. But if, if ever there was a points deduction at the right timing, the timing was good for that points deduction. Start of the season... If you're 10 points adrift from, from day one, it psychologically affects you. The timing of it was good for Everton. And having Daichi at the helm as well to galvanise them, absolute utopia. It's amazing what, what it's done. Uh, you, we said that day, Simon, I think you said it to be fair to you. This might galvanise the goodness and support. They're, they're vociferous and loyal anyway. But we shall see what happens out of them. <clears throat> There'd be nothing short of mind-blowing. But they weren't bad before either. So before the 10-point deduction, they weren't bad. Um, and, and they've been even better. Um, it helps when you've got three promoted sides that are stinking the place out. I mean, come on, let's have it right. Nine points out of 16 games to get third from bottom. Eight points out of 16. But I mean, come on, mm-hmm. this is poor. You know, we can call it for what we want. We can turn around and say, oh, it's very great that they're in games, but they're losing these games. Oh, that's right. And there's no, there's, there's no nobility in poverty. and There's no nobility in putting in decent performances. Everton are helped by the fact that the teams beneath them have accumulated a pretty paltry and meaningless target of, amount of points. But irrespective of that, what you've got is a very decent Everton side. This is a decent Everton side. Sean Dyche is a decent manager. And without Sean Dyche having solidified or, or stabilised the position that he inherited from Frank Lampard, being a grown-up in the room... Yeah. got himself together what happens off the pitch has nothing to do with the players players care about what's getting paid at the end of the month and every now and again if, they, if, it's, a, if it's a real challenge for them in terms of they get together because there's real adversity Everton for, there was never a doubt in my mind that Everton would recover from the 10 point penalty whether it's right or wrong or, or, or you know unfair they've got it and it's up to the players to win games and that's what they're doing and it helps when you've got opposition like Chelsea Yes, it just Paul. Your point's really good about the three promoted teams. They've been points tally wise a disaster. Last year, the three promoted teams were nowhere near the bottom of the mm. league, and the heat pressure on. Are you suggesting that probably the likes of Palace and Forest might have had a change of manager at this stage if there was a better start by the bottom three at this well, moment? Well, I, I I never like to suggest that someone's going to lose their job. I don't think that the Palace appointment of Roy Hodgson was particularly ambitious and I never tend to comment on Palace too much because it's an easy win for people to index the previous owner of a football club being critical of the current owners. Um, And I don't want to do that. It was done to me and I didn't like it. Um, And in the Forest situation, I'm an advocate for Steve Cooper. I don't want to be over-sentimental. I think he's a decent coach. And I think that... Um, Nottingham Forest are still a work in progress with some players that they brought in the summer that will eventually make them a decent side. And it wasn't so long ago that Forest were looking like a decent side. And a few results that have gone to the adverse, I know it's a lot of games that they haven't won. A lot of them have been drawn as well. Um, and I don't think that Forest should be looking... Unless, unless someone can tell me, out of the ether, they magic a wonderful manager that's going to do a better job than Steve Cooper, then I'm, I would have been reluctant. So, of course, if, if these three sides were better and Forest and Palace were sitting in the bottom three... Mm then of course you might find yourself in a different situation where the conversations are becoming a little bit more succinct about, hmm, have these guys got the ability to be able to do the job? But they're not, and they're in a situation that they are now. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.